Hey, DT and Micah here. Hey, I got something I want to show you from the Bible. And um, this is an old, it says Holy Bible there. But I mean, you can see, I mean, it's, this is, it's not new. But, uh, but I found something new in it. And it's, it's obviously the Bible's old, so it can't be that new. But, uh, but I've never noticed it. And um, it starts in 1 Corinthians. Um, and I've, if you've been around me much in the past six months, you probably, if we've had a lot of conversations, you've probably heard me cite this passage before, so stay with me. But um, it's in 1 Corinthians 4. I love 1 Corinthians. It was the first book I ever led a Bible study of my own through the book. Um, when I was in high school, this was the first book I ever did, 1 Corinthians. So it, to this day, it's still kind of got a sentimental thing for me. But, if, but I've never noticed this part of it before. In 1 Corinthians 4, uh, Paul, first of all, Paul is just really frustrated with the Corinthians, right? And so he is just laying them out. I mean, he's, he's really mean to them in four. He's like sarcastic with them. He's like, oh, you're so awesome. I'm terrible. You know everything. You don't need to listen to me anymore. He's a little bit passive aggressive, uh, maybe, if he was not, you know, Paul. But uh, but then he says, he kind of, he shifts gears, right? So he's just really been beaten on him and he shifts gears and he says, but I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children, even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. So I love this passage. Uh, you may have heard me say, like, this is where I feel like a lot of a lot of us are, is we say, man, I've got 10,000 fathers. I mean, I've got 10,000 guardians in Christ. You know, I listen to this podcast from this guy who really fills me up spiritually. Or like, you know, I sit in the seat and I just love David. I feel like he and I are really connected, even if he doesn't really know who I am. Or, man, I just love, you know, some of the spiritual leaders at our church, even if I don't actually have a relationship with them. Or, oh, I've read this book by this guy. And I've got, I've got 10,000 guardians in Christ, man. I'm in good shape. He says, but though you have 10,000 guardians, you don't have many fathers, right? You don't have a spiritual parent who is leading you and helping you grow. Um, and we need that, right? Therefore, he says, which you should do because I am your spiritual father. You should imitate me, not me. Paul says, uh, for this reason, and you think, okay, Paul, I'll imitate you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. What should I do? And then the next line, he says, for this reason, I'm sending you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind, and you think, well, wait, how, Paul, like, if I'm going to follow you, why are you sending me Timothy? right? And he says, he will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. All right. And so, um, so first of all, it's just a cool passage, right? Like, oh yeah. Okay. Paul says, imitate me. And the, to do that, I'm going to send you Timothy. All right. And you think, well, Timothy, like that's a really high degree of trust that Paul has for Timothy. All right. And so there's first, like the first set of thoughts you realize is that. Um, and, but what you start to realize is that the Corinthian church is really messed up. And my, I always thought of Paul as writing these letters to try and fix the churches, right? Okay, hey, the Corinthians, you got issues, right? So I'm going to send this, I'm going to send you this letter. And oh, by the way, I'm going to include this person that I'm sending. But when you start reading Paul's letters, what you start realizing is that as good as the letters are, and don't get me wrong, like I'm, I'm pro scripture, okay? Like scripture's important. Paul wrote it. It's good. God inspired it. Um, but a lot of Paul's letters really are not sufficient to the task of fixing the church that he wants to fix. So he hears about this problem in Crete, right? And in Crete, he's like, man, there's something going on in, in the church in Crete. We got to fix this. So he's like, Titus, buddy, come here. Uh, I need you to go to Crete and I need you to fix this church. And you're probably going to be there a couple of years, but I need you to work this thing out. So I'm going to send a letter to, with you just so they know who you are. But, uh, but I need you to go there and fix it. And so really what happens when you start reading the letters, and I love when you read um, when you read the New Testament, look for this and see if you see it as well. But what you start noticing is I always had this idea that the letter was the thing. And then I started having this idea that the letter had a person attached to it, right? To like explain the letter and explain what's going on. But more and more and more, what I'm seeing is that Paul's strategy seems to be that he sent a, he sent a person and the letter accompanies the person right? So we think of Jesus as a big time disciple maker, right? Like Jesus is making disciples. I don't know that until the last year or so, I've really recognized the degree to which Paul, Paul's whole strategy for planting churches all over the, the Mediterranean, all over the Middle East, Paul's whole strategy was built around making disciples that could agree with his way of life and every, you know, that he teaches everywhere in every church and then sending them to places that needed them. And then the letters in a lot of ways are just there as an accompaniment 
to the person, right? It's not so much that the person accompanies the letter, it's that the letter accompanies the person. And so we, um, all we have is the letters today. And so we think like, that's the thing. Paul's strategy was like, he sat in a room and wrote letters to people. But, um, but that's probably not the case. You know, there's, Paul had a ministry that goes for decades. A lot of these letters aren't very long. Um, there's not that many of them. Like, he did a lot more than just write letters. What did he do with the rest of his time? Well, he was making the people that he was investing in the people that the letters were going to get sent with. All right? And so, read, as you read the New Testament, and, and you know, as, as we move towards the new year, as we read the New Testament, I'd love for you to look for that and see if you see what I see. And that is that, um, that Paul's strategy really seemed to be about sending people way more than I think I had really appreciated. And again, this is an old Bible. It's beat up. It did, the verse didn't just get stuck in there. What's changed is that I'm changing in my awareness and I'm noticing things I didn't used to notice. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys next week.